Okay, here we are at the Cherokee RV Park in Blacksburg, South Carolina. We're gonna do a walking tour as usual, and man, is this gonna be a fast one because this is a very small park. Stick around. All right, as usual, let's get started with a walking tour. Here we are at the Cherokee RV Park in Blacksburg, South Carolina. This is going to be a really quick tour because it's a really small park. It has a total of 53 sites. This is the main building. There is rarely anyone here because it's a self-check-in site. You make a reservation, you get your information, and then you arrive and you go to your site. No fuss, no lines, no waiting. The roads are paved. There's a lot of green space. Some extra storage over here that's available if you have an extra trailer or something. So there are, like I said, there are 53 total sites. Not all of them are traveler sites. You can see here there's some longer term and permanent. And the permanent sites, People have, you know, gotten comfortable, set it up the way they like, they put their little rock garden and stuff like that. From what I've seen, they're all very well maintained, kept clean, and nothing, you know, dilapidated. So it's interesting. There's big power lines cutting through the middle of it. Not a problem, not in any way of anything. These sites over here are all pull through sites. And they do um, advertise that all of their sites are full hookup, 30 and 50 amp with sore and water. This is our site here. As you can see, they're fairly narrow, but they are deep enough, big rig friendly. As you know, if you've been watching the channel, our RV is about 43 feet long. We do have a separate vehicle that Ellen drives behind us. Or when I say us, I mean the truck and the RV. She travels with the dog Harley. So you can see we still have some room here in front and room to park the truck here as well. The sites come with a picnic table and a grill. And then the hookups are on this side as usual. And the sewer line, there's one at the front and back of the uh, site. So you can either pull through this way, as we have, or you can pull in this way, as they have, and they used that hook up there. I don't know if it has another one on the other side. I guess not for this site, so maybe that's why they came in that way. So, yeah, so the site's pretty wide there. So the roads around the pull-through sites are paved, but as you can see, the sites themselves are gravel. They are level. I haven't had any issue with those. Um, the electricity has been good. The water pressure has been good. And the, you know, the sore is the sore. Down towards the back here, there are more permanent sites and down this road in front of me here, there are more permanent sites, and those are gravel roads. They don't tend to be paved back there. Yeah, so that is about it for the walking tour, at least for the you know traveling section. You can stay a day, you can stay a week, and you can stay a month. I read that if you stay over a month, they will meter your electricity. Ellen will talk a little bit more about the rates and things like that and all the other things to do around town um, as far as the other amenities they do have wi-fi and they do have cable we don't use the cable and the wi-fi is the kind where you connect to the ssid and then you go to a web page and log in uh, i haven't used it we use starlink um, my starlink's there 
There was another gent down here who was using it, and he said his Starlink worked as well. And then our neighbor up here is using Starlink, and it's worked well for them. I also have T-Mobile home internet service, and that's been working quite well at a 5G connection, which is a pretty good deal. It's 50 bucks a month. I'll put some links down below if you want to learn more about that. Um, yeah. I'll give some drone flyover footage too, so you can see what it looks like from top, and a little bit of the surrounding areas. But there you go. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you? Oh, so it doesn't have amenities like, you know, showers and things like that. Um, you have to be pretty much self-contained if you come here. And it also doesn't have any tent sites. All right, well, we'll cut over to Ellen and have her tell you about the rest of the place. Smile at the camera, Ellen. There you go. Smiling. <laughs> Ellen's having difficulty because somebody called her out for not being happy. But we know that she's happy. Okay. All right, so as we're heading back up north from Florida, we're making stops along the way to a couple of different campgrounds. And here we are at the Cherokee RV Park in Blacksburg, South Carolina. We're going to stay here for about 10 days. We decided to stay a little bit longer than original because we we're going to meet up with family in Charlotte. So Blacksburg, South Carolina, in case you've never heard of it, because I've never heard of it. Have you heard of it? I never heard of it until we got here. Well, it is about three hours north of Atlanta, Georgia, and about an hour south of Charlotte. So it is located right off of the Interstate 85. So it's about a mile off the road, I think. Right. Yeah, just about. about yeah, not, so, and it was very good. easy to get into the park and, and park our rig. So, yeah, very yeah. easy access and close by as well. Yeah. After I finished the walking tour, I happened to run into the owner, Bill, and he told me a little bit about how the um, campground is used. So, he says that 10% of the sites are used by veterans, and then majority of the others, which I was thinking were uh, permanent we're actually traveling workers. They're either traveling nurses or people that are working on the pipeline. And then here on this side of the park, there are seven pull through sites uh, where we are. And those are the ones that come here either for one or two nights or a week or up to a month. And if you stay a month, they meter the electricity, but otherwise it's included. In so this. in addition to the picnic tables and the barbecue grills that they give you at each site here at the pull through sites, um, there is uh, I think there's like six pergolas right in front oh, of yeah. the uh, pull-through sites and there's also a big kind of a community fire pit where people can sit around and um, hang out there and watch the horses that are galloping in the meadow. Um, and there is one lady that she brought a big bag of carrots out there and so of course they flock to her. Okay. So. I'm gonna have to buy carrots if I ever come here again. So if you <laughs> buy carrots and bring them out to the horses, they will be your very good friends going forward. So yeah, it's kind of a cool little place. And um, as far as they get like a set of rules, uh, that's one of the cool things about the place. It doesn't have a lot of rules that are you know endless pages like some other places that we've been. So. Well, yeah. and you know everyone here that we've met has been very friendly. Um, you know it's not noisy. Um, everybody kind of hangs in their RVs and you know it we've never had any problems with noise or people walking through your sites or anything like that or there are dogs being out and about being crazy um, and the big thing is those dogs might run off leash but you don't see any poop right all right. over the place so that's kind of a cool thing okay so uh, like we said before Blacksburg is located just a little south of Charlotte. Um, so in the area here, uh, we did notice that there were some amenities. Um, so there's some of the big box stores within a, an exit or two. There's grocery stores here in this town. There's a food lion. Mm. Um, I think there's an Igley's. I'm not sure what that is, but, <laughs> um, and you know, all the big box stores are, like I said, within a reasonable drive. Um, there's also some local restaurants. We didn't go out to eat while we were here, really. Yeah. Um, but there's some hometown little restaurants downtown that you know I'm sure would appreciate your patronage. Um, and then there's an outlet mall in 
Gaffney as well. Scott didn't let me go. Hmm. A little upsetting. But, um, no room. And you know there are some historical parks nearby, so um, uh, they were very instrumental in the American Revolution. So we found some learning with that, and then there's lots of hiking that you can do, and you know some outdoor activities um, that are also in the area. Yeah, and then there's nerdy stuff to do too. For some reason, all of a sudden, I've got this interest in water towers. So nearby, there's a junkyard. You can't see it but from the air so I've got some drone footage I'll put in here and then there's this old water tower all rusted out that was pretty cool near there and then down in Gaffney too there's this big water tower called the peachoid uh, mm -hmm. which is shaped and colored like a peach so that's pretty cool video right here about that um, and then what else did we see oh and then I saw community I got this thing for communication towers too for some reason so uh, we saw some communication towers up on a hill and we noticed that that was going to be the highest point in town. So we um, kind of investigated and, and found our way up to there and I took some uh, drone footage up there too to kind of look over the town. It's not that picturesque because there's a bunch of trees going knocked down. It's like they're doing some kind of construction or building out. Yeah. But um, it's pretty cool. It gives you an idea of what's, what's around. Let's see, we had the, the National Park, what was it called? It was called the King's National Military Park yep. and then the King's Mountain State Park. So we went both to both of those and those are very, um, very historic, a lot of placards. They even had where you can call up with your phone and it will give you kind of a, a talking tour as you walk around, which was really cool. I don't know if they're doing that in a lot of the national parks now. Uh, that's the first time I've seen it and it was pretty cool. And um, the all the paths were kind of rubberized too so it was it wasn't as um concrete so anybody who has you know problem with their knees and stuff it's a little easier on the knees i actually talked to somebody who was walking with a cane and they were very appreciative that that was available to them there as far as if you need fuel diesel in particular there are there's a qt there's a loves there's a flying j uh, right around these exits uh, one or two exits from where we are so real close by so if you get here short of fuel and you got to load up it's right there and you can use your discount cards at at least it loves I don't know about the others I'll do the positive okay smile Ellen be happy I'm gonna put that in is it recording I'll, I'll do the positives how's that okay you do the positives. all right so um, of course, one of the first things when you're doing this type of lifestyle, you always think about the price of the resorts that you're going to stay in or campgrounds. Um, the price was $28 a night plus tax, so I think it came to like 30 bucks a night. Yeah, like 31. I think it was, 30. we stayed 10 nights, so it was 312 bucks. Yeah. You can't so, go wrong. So there. Yeah. yeah. Um, the owner is uh, on the premises, so if anything goes wrong, he's right here. Um, you know, it's very clean and well maintained. The other guests are very friendly. We didn't meet anyone that didn't want to talk to us. And again, like Scott said earlier, it's it's dog friendly. Your dogs can run around in the big field out there. And a big thing for me, since I do work all week long, is it has to be quiet. Um, and it's very peaceful here. So um, we've stayed in some campgrounds that aren't very quiet they've been near the highways but they're very loud so this one has been very peaceful and very quiet for me to do my work yeah. all week long it's close to the highway but it's secluded off of it so you don't hear any of the road noise like that the only noises that you hear around there is a train that goes by really early in the morning and it seems like a blast of horn for quite some time but it's, oh, yeah. it's off in the distance um, and it's one of those noises that you kind of get used to after a couple of days and it's it, it, not really enough to wake you up and bother you, at least not us. And then you can hear some roosters, uh, which is also fine. They're off in the distance somewhere. And I think there's like a dog kennel or something else nearby because you can hear the dogs every now and then. Um, but again, it's not really disruptive. It's just something that you hear. Um, and then there's tons of birds. As a matter of fact, Right outside our rig here, there's a tree and there's a robin in there and I took a peek in and there's, um, it's nesting and there's three eggs there, so that was actually pretty sweet. You're not supposed to touch the tree. I didn't the touch nest. the nest. I looked because the bird was flying in and out. There's an opening. It was fine. I didn't bother it. Oh my goodness. 
Oh, it's what else? What else? Um, Harley, as you can see from the video, is very pleased with the open area. And on the rules, it does say that you need to keep your dog on a leash, but um, we haven't seen that. We stay real close to our dogs, and other people have been out there without their dogs on a leash, and uh, they've called them back if they think they're getting into trouble, so uh, that's not a big deal. And she's so well behaved yeah. anyway, so she is healing. Uh, she's yeah. healing from her surgery, so she's she's still very close by to us at all right. times. All right, so what do we got for negatives? Hmm. So as far as negatives, um, I, there's not really any negatives. Some people would complain about the width of the site and how close you are to your neighbors, but I, I think it's fine. And I showed you in the video what the proximity is to your neighbor. And most people in these type of places know that you're that close, so I think they go out of the way to be more quiet and more aware, not to, you know, be disruptive to their neighbor. Yeah, um, we, we try not to have loud fights or anything right. like that. Yeah. <laughs> call, them, uh, call them in for dinner, right. supper. <laughs> Come on in for supper, Scott. Dinner time. Right. Ring the bell. Right. Oh, I'm afraid more people would come. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, there is power lines that run right through it, but it, they're not in the way. It's not like the power poles are in the way or anything like that. So I don't think that that's really a negative. And then what was the other thing? Oh, there's like they don't have showers in those kind of facilities or laundry facilities. So you have to be self-contained if you come here. And I think I pointed out in the walking tour too, there are no tent sites if that's important to you. but typically the people we're talking to are RVers, so uh, that shouldn't really be a negative either. So I think that's about all I've got. You got anything else on the negative side? No. Yeah. I think we might have to do that part over again Why? because you had the paper flailing. I did? Yep. You were like this with the paper. You were talking with your hands with the paper. Maybe I up. sit back like this and just let you talk. All right. So I can't have the papers in my hand because I talk with the papers. Because you're dumb. That's not nice. And why does that... this place have 53 sites, not 55? Oh my God. <laughs> why seven? Seven. Seven, not eight. Why not 10? I don't know why it has only 53, Ellen. Maybe that's all they could fit. Why 53? Why not just 50? Because he wanted to maximize profitability by having the extra three. I think I could have found two more sites. Maybe he will. Okay, so the, the negatives, here are some negatives. So the negatives don't matter to us. They, they typically don't, we adapt pretty well. So some people would complain about the width of the site because they're really not that wide, but they're wide enough. We've got our chairs out there, there's the grill, there's a picnic table, and plenty of room to walk by without, you know, tripping over things and stuff like that. The other negative is that there are no amenities like no pool, there's no showers. Um, and then the next thing would be some people might complain about the power lines being right overhead, but you know, you only see them during the day, you don't see them at night. And the, uh, their poles aren't in the way to bother you or bump into or, you know, back into. So I don't think that those are really significant negatives, but if you were gonna nitpick, that's what you would probably nitpick on. Yes, I, I would say the only real thing is there's no pickleball. Oh, right, there's no pickleball. I said there's no pool, right? Yeah. So there's no laundry or anything like that. So I think you said that. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that's all we got for negative. So overall, I think we we're pretty pleased with the place. I'd come back here if we were coming back through here, um, even to spend more time at those national parks, get more of the history, because there was a lot of hiking around there, which is pretty cool. Yeah. 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 It's good to learn. It's yeah. good to learn. Yeah. All right. Well, so there you got it. Um, so if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, subscribe. And if you think other people benefit from watching the video, share it out to them. We'd appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Catch you later. Don't forget to watch the peach. Oh, <laughs> yes, watch the peach. Watch the peach.